The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, welcome everybody to uh, our October webinar. I must apologize for the technical difficulties we had getting started, but uh, it's good to see that a lot of you are on, so that's great. Uh, we have... Uh, a few people that are uh, having difficulty getting on. There's a couple. Yep, they... Offline, sure. offline. Yeah, they'll get on eventually. They'll get it worked out. Okay. So down in the... Um, uh, you have a question box, so if uh, you can hear us, can you just type something and let us know? Yeah, all good? Lovely. Oh, great. That's fine. Thanks, Super Jody. Right. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, like I said, welcome Dream Teamers to our webinar for October. We have a special guest tonight, which we'll introduce a bit later, who's going to talk to us about uh, sponsoring and recruiting, so that's exciting. We're going to start... Um, I, by the way, just for those who are new to our webinar, just to do a little bit of housekeeping, you'll notice that your microphone on your screen has been uh, a little red cross in it. Um, we've, everybody's muted except ourselves and the special guest, <coughs> excuse me, because otherwise if everybody was talking at once, it would be too difficult. Uh, at any time you can ask us questions, just need to type it in your little box and we'll keep, uh, keep a track of that. Um, Okay, so we're going to start with the shout outs for September. So let me get that up on this one. Oh, sorry. Just a second. Victoria, can, can you just type in there, honey, if you can see us? We'll, we'll put the, um, the PowerPoint up shortly. Wait, what are you waiting on? I was just waiting to see Victoria because she said that she could. She had no screen, could, but it could be her phone. Um, All right. Okay, so I'm going to get the uh, shout outs going. So I don't know how to work this Mac. How do I get the. Well, play. play. Okay, here we go. And we will go show the screen. Play. Can you see the screen? Can somebody type in if you can see the screen? Yep, yes, great. okay, thanks, thanks Jody. All right, we will quickly move along. Okay, so shout outs for September. Top sales, as you can see on the screen, if you uh, you can take a screen dump if you like, just so that you can uh, keep the record on if you like. And I've, I've typed in September too, and it's supposed to be October. No, no, it was September. Oh, yeah, it was September. September. Oh, okay, sorry. It's okay, she's had a birthday, so <laughs> she's allowed to forget things. How rude. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, you can you can see all of the uh, the numbers up there. So there's some pretty impressive statistics up there. Uh, Daniel Brown at uh, almost four and a half thousand PRV. Uh, Cindy Gascoigne with uh, just almost cracked four thousand PRV. Rachel Reeves almost three and a half. Angelique Passy on three two. Irene D as always in the the uh, top sellers there with 3,100. Uh, Rainbow Wade over 3,000. Hayley Russell at 28. Anita Bush with uh, almost 28. Uh, Sue Bland at 2,700. Jessica Rogers at 2,500. Melinda Payne at 2,500. And Erin Stafferton at 2,500 POV. So that's some uh, great numbers, ladies. Uh, really good work with that. Top sponsors. I, I so want to say banana every time I see your name, Shiana. So Shiana Ham, seven spon uh, seven recruits for the month of September. That is outstanding. Outstanding, yeah. Well done. Angelique Passy, Jessica Samuels with three each. Christy Poe, Karen Lovering, Christy Venz, Renee Wiley, Marissa Satchers, Lee Slotosh, and Beth Holmes all with two each. And then there was a gazillion of you with uh, one each for the month of September. So that's fantastic. That's good results, um, um, everybody. Okay, so moving along, we have a bunch of new certified consultants. Tammy Klimas, Erica, sorry, I, I do this every month. I apologise up front for disastering your names. Thanks. Erica Anzalino, Kelly Brown, Astrid Twig, Julie Duxbury, Jessica Bailey, Louise Perry, Nicole, oh, my goodness, how do I say that? He, huh? Yeah. How, where would you say that? I don't know. He, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Lindy Walker, Tony Ferrugia, Melanie Reed, Emma Dwyer. Oh, she got a name twice. 
Uh, Kylie Should Smith. Kylie, I'm not Kylie Smith, probably, I imagine. Vicky, did you type these in? Okay, like I said, she's had a birthday. Um, Vicky Wayhoon, Jeanette Bedro, Carly Myers, Sharon Warren, Tana Graham, Sarah Dilly, Amy Diggles Parsons, presumably, Jessica Mendez, Alicia Deegan, and Alison Wall Raven. There's more. Oh, there's more. Okay, so on the other side of the page, Sunshine Pierce, Laurie. Lissetra, Naomi Sita, Kylie Kista, Aaron Joy McIntosh, or Aaron Joy McIntosh, Camille McGibbony, Elizabeth Rickards, or Rickards, Gemma Slotosh, Kelly Lovell, Crystal Massey, Cian White, Katia Vestro, Patricia Brandenburg, Rebecca Tarantiak Thorne, Marie Nicholson, Christy Bennard. Shana Russell, Sylvia Trencher, Tori Goodchild, Jennifer Nicholas, Jade Kennedy, Alana Harrison, Amber Donald, and Kelly Sargent. Oh, there's more. No. Oh, okay, yeah, just a little sorry. Bit more, yeah. A few more certified consultants Frances Coles, Beverly Ashburner, Sophie Timu, Melissa May Bertie, Priscilla Ishak, Robin Kevill, Jay Hodgson. Tina Marie Tilby, Nicole Donnelly, and Helen Washington. So well done, ladies. That's a lot of certified consultants promoting for September, and that, that's a really good sign of, of growth for your team, so that's exciting. So our new lead consultants in September, Sue Bland, Shea Rose Bellinger, Tammy Kesterton, Harley Burling, Tony Doreen, Monica Surreo. Crystal Lawrenson and Nicole Karam. Or Karam. Now you might wonder why Monica has a little star next to her name. That's because she double promoted. She got from uh, essential consultant all the way to lead in one month. So good job, Monica, and good job to the other ladies. Star consultants. We have three new ones Daniel Nibble, Kendall Holtain, Jessica Rogers, a new superstar consultant, Daniel Brown. And a new director. Congratulations, Angela. Angela Cassie, that's well fantastic. Done. That's lovely. Well done for all the results this month. Um, you're all doing well, and we really, really appreciate all that you do. Okay, so that's it for the shout outs. Let me just turn that off. Now you should be looking at our heads again. Um, can you see us oh, again? Shiana. <laughs> It's a good thing you've got a, sense, a good sense of humour, Shiana, with my husband about your name. Wonderful. Okay, so now uh, before we introduce our special gift, as you know, we're always uh, giving or do giveaways, and Glennis is about to put a thinking cap on because we haven't discussed beforehand what it is we're going to give away, so she's on the spot. But while she's thinking about what she's going to give away, um, I will conduct the first of the giveaways. Now I'm going to show you a product from uh, the current catalogue and I'm going to hide the name from you and your job is to tell us what product it is or the name of the product rather or the name of the fragrance um, and the first one to get it right will get something um, which Glennis is about to think about <laughs> if she can't go fast enough we'll have to think about it for the rest of the webinar and we'll tell you at the end what it is you're going to win. So. If you're ready for this one, Jess, you can't see us. I'm sorry about that. I've got uh, I've got the webinar on. Everybody else seems to be able to see me. I presume that if you're on a mobile phone, you might not be able to see us, and if that's the case, I'm terribly sorry. Um, you won't be able to participate in this activity. So if you're ready, I'm about to hold up this product, and I want the name of the scent or the name of the fragrance. It's one of okay. the essential oils. So here it is. Let me hold it up to the screen. There we go. So whenever you're ready, tell me what it's called. And the first one to get it right. Oh, my goodness, that was way too easy. Jody Craig, well done. Jody, you've taken the wind out of my sails. I was hoping for that to last <laughs> a little bit longer. Uh, oh, so Jody was the first to guess it. Chelsea was second. Uh, it is. Oh, let me get the camera. Rest. You guys are all too good. 
Well, now you've got me worried about our second one. Uh, we're going to have a special guest in a second, and after her and before our question time, we'll, we'll do another one. Um, so you're going to have to be fast because it seems like uh, you guys know your stuff pretty good. So I'm going to hand over to Glennis because she's going to introduce our guest speaker while I look at the phone and pick something that we're going to give away. Um, Jody, we'll get back to you on what it is you've won. Okay, now what I'd like to do is introduce our speaker, and for those that have not met her, her name is Sheree Reeves, and she is, apart from being absolutely gorgeous, she's one of my dear friends and a fellow director. She is the recruiting queen as far as I'm concerned. She just recruits like it's just as easy as. Anyhow, she's going to share tonight some of her tips and tricks and some of the things that she shared when we were at Reunion. Um, I'm excited because because I had one of the expos, I was not able to hear her, so I'm looking forward to listening to her now. So um, please um, welcome Sheree Reeves. Sheree, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Super dope. And let me just see if everybody else can hear you. Can you guys hear Sheree? And you have to remember, this is the first time yes. we've had a guest yeah. there too. So, All right, um, let me turn this webcam off. Um, Sheree, do you want me to just start straight up with the PowerPoint? Sure. Okay, well, let me turn our screen on. So you should now be looking at our little grandson. And we'll get the PowerPoint for Sheree up. And we'll go play. Very good. Somebody let me know. Can you see the power, see Sheree's PowerPoint? Anybody? Yes, super. Okay, Sheree, the floor is yours. Uh, go for it. Just let me know when I need to turn the slides over. We're looking at Sheree Reeves, Star Director Recruiting. Oh, sorry. Yes, I, I forgot to mention you were a Star Director. I said Director, but she is a Star Director. She is. So I apologise for that. I don't mind. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. I feel a little bit privileged on you first. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like Glenna said, um, I got to speak at um, in Sydney on recruiting conversations, but for those that heard it, I'm not going to do all the same things. I'm going to get to finish some of the other stuff I didn't get to do as well, so forgive me for the things that I do re repeat, and um, hopefully you get something else out of it as well. Um, so just to start with, um, I want to show you a picture of my family. These are my motivation for absolutely everything. Um, my wife are joining Sensi. Um, it started out to be very different. Um, I joined to help my cousin move over from the States, um, hoping that I would get to know her more and her family. Um, but that quickly changed when I saw what the opportunities um, were for Sensi for me and my family. Um, Sensi does a lot of different things for our family. Um, it helps us to uh, pay for things for my children. It helps us to obviously and trips for my husband and I. Um, it's one of the coolest things is that it um, allows me to do things, my husband and I to do things that we um, always wanted to do for our kids that in the past we might have missed out on. So yeah, you can see in the picture here I have six children. My eldest is 18 and my youngest is four. Um, going through them there's Ethan, Ebony, Bailey, Brielle, Kate and Lacey and my husband's Jordan. Um, but um, as I mentioned in Sydney, um, we, we hadn't got into our own family home and um, so we knew that with Sensi, um, that although my husband earns really good money, um, to support eight people it doesn't go very far. So the income that Sensi would bring in um, allowed us to get into our first home this year, which was huge for us and um, that was after 19 years of marriage. So. Um, that's really cool. But my biggest goal with Sensi is that my husband doesn't love the career that he's in. Yes, it earns good money, but for him to change and do what he really wants to do, he'll have to take a pay cut and um, and start, you know, not start over, but go backwards before he goes forward again. So if I can earn enough with Sensi and make a business with, with Sensi, then that will be able to, again, give him the confidence to do what he will love to do as opposed to doing what he has to do. Um, so for me, I realised really early on when I joined Sensi that if I wanted to just have a paycheck, I could do parties and sales. If I wanted to build a business and have guaranteed income, not only that month but future months and for years to come, that I needed to recruit so that I could build a business. 
and um, for me, when it comes to knowing, um, when I realise everything that Sensi's done for me and my family, it, I think that's the biggest secret for me as to why um, I can recruit. I don't, I wouldn't say easily, but why I do recruit because when it comes to recruiting, what I think about is what it can do for that person and their family, what potential Sensi has um, to bless their lives. So when it comes to um, when it comes to recruiting, you might want to go to the next slide. Um, I've heard all kinds of excuses as to why people can't recruit. Um, oh, I hope they're going to keep coming up. Do you want to just keep clicking? Yeah. Sure. Firstly, um, people are scared that they'll be rejected. Um, that you know, heaven forbid, if they ask someone if they'd be interested in Sensi or um, the the opportunities that come with it or having free overseas travel that people might think, oh, you know, they're just, oh, I can't be their friend anymore. Um, another one is that people are worried about being too pushy. They don't want to offend people by asking them. I personally think it's the hugest compliment to ask people to join Sensi, to let them know that I'd love to work with them, that I think highly enough of them that I see qualities in them that I think that they would do really well. So offending um, isn't something that has ever been something that I've worried about. Um, people are worried about losing money when they flip a party or that that really unreal customer is going to join, that you know they're, they're going to miss out on money. But um, you learn very quickly with that 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 isn't true. I can't help but think of um, a story. I remember my dad used to tell me about a blacksmith that was shoeing um, a horse and the guy thought that it was a lot of money. I don't remember the exact details of it, but it was like he was might have been charging $50 to shoe um, the man's horse. And, you know, he was thinking, you know, I don't want to do that. And the guy said, well, you have the option. You can pay me the $50 or else you can pay me. There's eight nails in each of the horse's shoe, in the, you know, the horseshoe that goes on them. You can pay me one cent for the first nail and then you can double it to two cents for the second four cents for the third, eight cents, and it just continued on like that. And um, and if you work it out, the difference that comes, either $50 or the huge amount of money that comes if you just continue to double little bit by little bit. So, yeah, when we recruit, we might lose money to start with on that first nail and even the second and the third and the fourth. But very quickly it grows and grows and... Um, I'll, I'll get you guys to do the maths and work out the answer to that one. So there's 32 nails there and doubling from one cent. Um, to me, that answers um, that fear or limitation that you're going to lose money. Another one is prejudging, um, that people aren't going to be interested, that they don't look right, that they're too quiet, too qualified, um, or we all know the ones at the parties that are just way too loud. Um, I've had all of those kinds of people join and they are absolutely unique and wonderful in the way that they work their businesses. So I've learned really quickly not to judge and I've even had, you know, those quiet ones in the corner that you'd never think would join that have and they they just love Sensi and are so passionate about it and work it differently to others that can be very successful. Another one I hear is that there's too many consultants in my area. Um, it's funny, last month the second and third top sellers in Australia um, were both from Mackay. Um, I know that because the third one was in my team and she knows the second one who is in Mackay also. And between them they sold an incredible amount of Sensi and Mackay is not a big place, it's not even a mining area so it's not like oh, it's there out in the, in the country in the mines, everyone's got lots of money there. Um, it just goes to show that there are never too many consultants in one area and we can all do amazing um, wherever we are. And it's also a really good reminder that we're not limited to our areas in Sensi. We can go, we can extend all over Australia and even New Zealand, which is fantastic. Um, another one is limited time, um, that people don't have time to recruit. They're so busy doing parties or um, the truth is they just don't make the time to recruit and recruiting should be a part of what we already do, not an additional thing. Um, another one is it's hard to recruit. <laughs> um, honestly, I have six children as you saw in my picture. Um, I coach netball. I'm incredibly busy with church activities. Um, my children all do rep activities, you know, sporting, music, things like that. Um, 
if I find the time to recruit and um, I find that it's not something that's hard at all, I actually really enjoy it, then honestly, if I can do it, absolutely anybody can. Um, another one is that people say that there's no half price joining specials like they have in other regions that, you know, the complaints that well, we, don't, we don't get the um, specials that other regions do. Um, we don't need them. We don't need them yet. And if we did, it would um, lower the value of what Sensi is at the moment. Sensi will give us those when we need them. But while we're continuing to grow, um, we're actually better off not having the specials. I really believe that. Um, and with all the people that I've had to join Sensi, um, I'm pretty sure I have, I don't know, between 50 or 60 active frontline right now. And obviously a lot more have joined than that. Um, I didn't offer any of them um, joining specials other than our transition um, month. That's the only special we've had. But um, I've never offered to pay for their kits or anything like that. They've all joined because they saw the value in Sensi. Um, and a special was not necessary. It's already an unbelievably good value kit. It's um, Jesse told me the other day it's a $349 worth um, in the startup kit, um, give or take a couple of dollars over the last few months. Um, and obviously transition, it was a lot more than that. And um, for 152 with shipping, it's it's just a no-brainer. Um, another one is I don't know what to do. Um, so obviously this doesn't just apply to new recruits. Um, people that have been doing Sensi for a long time, if they haven't <coughs> educated themselves or listened to training calls, things like that, they're not going to know what to do. But this isn't an excuse just to to not to recruit. <laughs> um, another one is I'm new and I don't know enough. Um, I'm a big believer that enthusiasm is way more important than experience and that um, if you're enthusiastic about the products and motivated to get them in front of people and share with them what you love about it, it doesn't matter if you don't know the answers to everything. You just say, look, I'm going to find out for you and get back to them and people really respect and appreciate that. Um, I'm not good enough to recruit um, and I can't do it or the big one that I love is it's impossible, I can't recruit. Um, it absolutely is impossible if you go to the next slide. Um, it, the word itself says I'm possible and Nelson Mandela said it's always, it always seems impossible until it's done. Um, myself and many others are proof of that. Recruiting is incredibly possible and I love what Walt Disney says, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Um, but basically at the end of the day on the next slide, our fears and our limitations, they all just equal excuses and all of us need to decide right now to make money instead of excuses. It really is um, that, um, it really is. There's no more to it than that. If we stop making excuses, we, we will make money. And just remember, think of that, that blacksmith with each nail. I okay, so firstly, what I want you to address is um, our mindset. And as I discussed in Sydney, before we can have recruiting conversations with other people, we have to get our recruiting conversations in our own heads right. Um, the, jump onto the next slide. Um, oh, sorry, we've got to jump ahead of it. That's all right. Um, so I want you to think about first how you were first introduced, sense, introduced to Sensi, who the person was, what they said to you, and um, if you can write down the blessings that have come into your life through working your Sensi business. I'm going to give you a little bit of time now, but I encourage you to later on after this is finished to sit down and just keep writing it all out because it's really important that in your own mind you understand um, how beneficial Sensi has been to you and your life. And once that clicks in your own mind, you're going to very quickly um, have that change in mindset that's going to help you set some great goals, which moves me on to the next slide. So when, we, when it comes to goal setting, keep in mind um, this quote, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Um, it's really important that when you set your goals that you commit to achieve them no matter what, no matter what obstacles come along, speed bumps in the road, don't just pull over and get out, keep going, get through it, doesn't matter if it slows down for a little bit, there are times that it will pick up. And um, so I'd encourage you all to set a goal 
um, a realistic one but also an exciting one. Um, for me, I have a goal set that I recruit five each month. Um, if I don't achieve that, I come really close or I surpass it. So on average, I would definitely be doing five a month um, and there's no reason why you guys couldn't do that as well. The reason I picked that, and this might help you pick what you're going to choose for your goal, is that I achieved it one time um, and I didn't achieve it a while since and I, I thought, well, if I did it once, I can do it again. And I'm happy for you to use me as an example and say, look, if she can do it, I certainly can. Um, the other thing is, like I said, commit to achieving it no matter what. And um, it's really good to hear trainings like this or many, many others that are a lot better, I'm sure. Um, but it's really important that when you go away from it that you do do something about it. Um, I've heard a story of, um, I don't know, I call it the turkey story and I haven't looked it up, I'm just going off memory so it might not be incredibly right. But um, the that there's all these turkeys that went to a conference and um, they're all, you know, squabbling about how how their lives are and bad they are and then one of them gets up and goes, hey, we can we can fly just like the eagles and um, he gets up and flies and all of them are like, oh, wow, we can do it and they all get up and fly and had a great time and thought this is really amazing and then at the end of the conference all the, all the turkeys just walked home. So it's kind of, um, when it comes to training, it's, it's really important that whatever it is that you're learning, um, and tonight we're talking about recruiting, that whatever you learn that you set those goals and that you don't feel really excited or motivated, motivated, motivated to achieve them and then do nothing about it. You need to make sure that you put things in place to make habits because habits trump motivation every time. Um, sorry, I just lost my Anyway, anyway, that's okay. Um, and just keep in mind that Sensi is a marathon; it's not a sprint. We're in here, we're in this for the long run. Um, I don't. I do not want to do this for a week or a month or a year. I want this to be um, a, you know, a career for me that I continue to grow. And I, I encourage you all to have the same mindset. So next slide: whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And I add to that and that we receive great blessings from it. When we truly realise and acknowledge what Sensi has done for, for us and our families, it makes it really easy to conquer fears and limitations and quit making excuses. And something that's really important when it comes to mindset, if you want to go to the next slide, is that we have it, our priorities set in the correct order in our minds. Um, our first and foremost priority should be to sponsor. Second is to book parties and third is sales and we should have that in mind when we are on the phone to people, we should have that in mind when we um, are doing a party, um, anything. When we're just talking to people that we, you know, that have nothing to do with Sensi, I'm constantly thinking, oh, that'd be great at sponsoring or, uh, I'm sponsoring, sorry, that'd be great at Sensi or I could really see how Sensi could benefit them. Sponsoring needs to be at the front of our minds. Um, I shared this in Sydney, but I'll just let everybody know. I had um, a girl give me a call who was a past um, host of mine, and um, I'd already talked to her about flipping the party, and she didn't want to. She didn't want to do it at that time, and um, you know she's ordered off me since. And she called me one day, and um, I answered the phone because she's in my phone, so I answered and said her name, and she goes, "Guess what?" And she was really excited, so I was like, "You're going to join Sensi," and she's like. Um, no, I was just going to place an order and um, the coolest bit was that at the end of that conversation um, she did join, she did decide to join Sensi, well I, she said yeah send me the stuff through and by the end of that day or the next day from memory she had joined up and the, um, comparing that to or talking about the start people were worried about losing money because yeah she was a great host and had continued to place orders. Um, she was going to place an order that was about fifty dollars worth. It wasn't even, you know, a big amount. Um, and at the start, she just wanted to join Sensi because um, she was going to get it wholesale, and she knew that she had her customers or her friends that were my customers that would become her customers. So she thought, oh, I can just look after them, and that will keep me active every three months. But um, she actually went on to achieve her um, Shooting Star Award, and she's um, 
oh gosh, from memory now, I think she's achieved sensational start level two and she absolutely loves it. Um, I heard from her today. She actually lives um, about an hour and a half from me. So that was another reason I wanted her to join so I didn't have to keep driving out that far to two parties. Um, but she um, called me today and wants to meet up because she has more ideas. So, you know, our goals change for joining and if we can just give people the opportunity to join and to allow them to have their goals changed to see if it really becomes something for them, um, then, you know, I think that's kind of our responsibility to pay it forward. You know, how much that we have received from Sensi, um, we can give that opportunity to others. And if I didn't have sponsoring in the forefront of my mind, my number one priority, um, I would have just got a $50 order and she would continue to be my customer. So priorities, sponsoring has to be number one. Okay, next slide. Uh, prepare. If we fail to prepare, we prepare, we prepare to fail. Um, and um, some of the things that we're afraid of really aren't that scary at all if we prepare. So I want us to go into those a few things with you. Next slide. Um, we are all living, breathing, walking advertisements for our business. So be aware people are always watching and never be caught sensi naked. That's pretty good advice. <laughs> um, I hate being on my own because I laugh on my own. I hope someone else is laughing as well. I, la I laughed. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so keep that in mind as we go through these things um, because us being living, breathing, walking advertisements of our business relates to absolutely everything we do from parties to social networking to what we put on um, in our stories, things like that. So let's start with parties. Um, I love to flip parties. Um, my PRV never used to be, I, I really struggled to hit my goal of 2,000 PRV every month. Um, I would sometimes, but because I flip so many parties, um, I was only getting those one and two and four and eight cents. It felt like some months um, because I would give the parties to my to my hostesses. Um, but one way that I introduce that, because I like to do it subtly, but right from the beginning, so it's very natural in the conversation. They don't feel like, you know, it's getting thrown on them. When I do this, the host startup, the host packs, um, in their information that I give them where I explain about the host rewards and getting their wish list, things like that, um, this is what I write at the end. I say, or if you decide you absolutely love Sensi and would like to join up to get your Sensi wholesale and also make money, we can, sl we can flip the party. This means that you get all of Sensi's host rewards and you can have all of the commission also. Just let me know before or at your party so that we can announce it as the launch party. I'd absolutely love you to join my team. Um, sometimes I get hosts that feel that are worried that I'm missing out by them joining. So I just reassure them with that I'd absolutely love them to or that that's my first option. When I when you are coaching your host, it's important that you go through the packs with them. Um, and this obviously is going to come up if it's in the pack. So just put it out there and kind of gauge what they want. If they say to you, look, no, I'm absolutely not interested in that, then I wouldn't bring it up again. But it, you kind of gauge, you watch for signs, you discuss things as you go along, but it's important that you have a time limit on it as well because if you get to the end of that party and they still haven't decided and then you put the orders all through and, you know, it might if it's a big party, it might take an hour or so to do that, then um, if they decide they want to join, that's a lot of wasted time. You really need to put a deadline on it um, so that it makes it fair for you as well. Yeah, they can still join, but once the party's in, you know, or once the party's finished, then I'm going to keep that party and uh, we can do another launch party if they do decide to join. Plus it creates some urgency, which I find really helps because they often will go, yep, make it my launch. Even at the end of the party, they're kind of like, oh, especially when they figure out what kind of, we help them figure out what commissions they can make from that with the host rewards as well. Um, you want to ensure that your parties look really easy. Don't take too many bags with you. Uh, we want them to think, like I said before, if we can do it, that they can do it as well. Um, be really approachable. Um, 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 make sure that you come early, that you have things set up, greet guests at the door so that, um, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's hard work that, you know, when they walk in that you're still setting up and they're thinking, oh, that's so much to do. Um, you want to have fun with your guests and, you um, if they're enjoying it and they see that you're enjoying it, it makes them think that, you know, maybe this is a fun thing to do or do you know what I mean? Um, just keep it simple. 
Um, we have we want to do lots of recruiting commercials um, throughout the party as well. Um, a visual one that I like to do, which I showed in Sydney, was that I just have a gift bag and I attach a real hundred dollar note to it, and um, inside I have um, at least three um, joining packs. Um, and while I'm talking through um, through the party, any time that I talk about you know incentive trips or anything like that, I can kind of just touch the bag. You can pick it up as well, but I kind of just tap on it or point to it. And then um, normally someone will say, "Is that a real hundred dollar note?" And uh, I'll be like, "Yeah, it is." And they'll be like, "What's that for?" Which is good because I want them to ask me about it. And that's when I pick the bag up and say, um, "When I first joined Sensi." Um, if I did a party each week, I'd earn normally about $100 on average per party. And um, that $100 made a big difference to, to our family in paying for you know, things like sports or music lessons, things like that. And, and then I just say, if anyone here could do with an extra $100 a week, um, and that would make a difference in your family's life, please come up and grab an opportunity pack that I have inside. and. Um, and I have a gift in there also for you, for anyone that you know has the courage to come and ask. So um, basically, that's just a little visual um, that I do. Other things you can do are, um, are games throughout your party presentation. Um, some successful ones that I I like to do um, to start with just icebreaker games. Um, a couple that I do. One is two truths and one lie. So we just go around the circle and everyone just introduces themselves and tells two truths about themselves and one lie. And this one, um, it's a good one because everyone starts laughing and they think they know things about each other or they learn things about each other. And um, But I always start so that I can kind of guide the questions where I want them to go. Um, you know, things like, so things that you want to learn about them to help them recruit. Um, to help to know if they'd be someone that, or to, to kind of give you, I'm not saying this right, um, to open little windows into their lives to help you see ways that Sensi could enrich their lives or bless their lives. Um, another one I do is um, I have never, and basically all I do is I grab a bag of lollies that are wrapped and put a bowl in the middle and I give everybody five lollies. And um, Basically, you say things like, um, I have never had a tattoo, and um, if anyone in the room has a tattoo, they would chuck a lolly in the bowl. Um, again, you kind of you can qu ask questions to work out personality types, whether they're adventurous or risk takers or things like that, and um, that's a whole other topic, but learning personality types can really help you in your recruiting efforts. Um, but it also helps them get to know you as well and each other, and um, which is... Icebreakers are great because it helps with recruiting. Another game I like to do is the ticket game, which basically, for those that don't know, I just grab a tip um, about this game. I just get a raffle ticket book and I basically just say, and I love doing this one, especially if it's people that have been to parties before and already know a fair bit about Sensi. Um, so I kind of figure it's time for them to be recruited. Um, I just say if anyone asks me questions about the products, they get one ticket. Anyone asks me questions about joining a party, you get two tickets. And if anybody um, asks me questions about um, the Sensi business or opportunities with Sensi or why I joined, anything to do with that, you get three tickets. Now, obviously, you have a nice prize there that you're going to draw out at the end. So those in the group that um, figure out they get more tickets for asking about recruiting, often the party goes to predominantly about recruiting and of course you get the products get asked about as well. But um, I did this at a party and um, the host didn't join that night but she did a basket party on top of because she still had more orders to do and um, so her party that night came to, oh gosh, it was probably around the $1,000 mark and then when she took her basket into work, which was a hospital, she ended up getting about $1,500 more in orders so she hadn't joined by the night so I put that $1,000 party through and then when it came to her getting another $1,500, she was like, no, nah, I'm joining. Um, you know, I'm doing all the work here. Why should she get the commission? Um, and she um, she joined up. Obviously, she put those party orders through her. She went on to achieve um, Shooting Star and also Sensational Star 3. And um, she's still active today. And at that same party, I had three other girls join as well. One under her and the other two I knew as well because we had mutual friends. They joined with me. Um, 
from that party. So the ticket game works really, really well. Um, obviously, they ask you all sorts of questions about you know the trips that we do and um, what we can earn, things like that, stuff that we wouldn't really go into in a party. So it's a really cool opportunity to help get people over the line. Um, also, throughout your um, party presentations, you want to just sprinkle little short sentency sparks with comments like, um, I'm lucky instead of earning a salary, I get financially rewarded for all my efforts and results, or something like, I love being my own boss, or I love working my pyjamas. Um, Does anyone here get to work for a company that gives them free overseas holidays? Um, if you've got a really helpful guest or if, you know, like with the ticket game, someone's asking about the product and someone else starts answering the questions, you could say something like, oh, you're a natural, you're doing my job for me. Um, or another one is, I'm always looking for people who love Sensi to join my team. Um, and then another thing I always do at parties is that when it comes to checkout, I always ask three questions. First one is, would you like to host a party? Second, would you like to host a basket party? because that seems to be um, a little bit easier to do. And the third one is, would you like more information about joining Sensi? And um, and it doesn't matter um, okay. if you know they want to do it or not. I ask them to absolutely every person. I make that a rule for myself because I've had people say yes when I never would have, you know, I prejudged them, I never would have thought they would. So um, for me, that's just a rule and I encourage that to always be a rule for you as well. Okay, so the next slide. Um, speaking about asking questions, um, it's important that we listen as well. Um, I believe that, um, but sorry, believe it or not, it's more to talk about than just sensi. So we need to make sure that we ask them questions, um, that we listen and then we respond, and we all know that that's called conversation. Um, have conversations with people. It doesn't have to be about Sensi. In fact, it's better if it's not. Talk to them about other things where you look for the things that make their eyes light up or look for the difference between what they have and what they want. And um, and then obviously you can jump in there with, you know what, you should do what I'm doing with Sensi and I know I can help you get that. Um, make sure you don't word vomit all over them. Don't be a big bulldozer and just push what you want on them. Suggest things have a chat to them and then leave it with them to think about it or to, you know, to come back and ask you more, more things about it. Make sure that you listen specifically for key words and phrases, um, things like, oh my gosh, I love Sensi or I want everything or I have so many friends that would love this, um, I'm looking for work, um, I like to ha I'd like to have more confidence, I hate my job or I hate Fridays, uh, sorry, I hate Mondays and love Fridays. Um, even if they say something like, oh, I'd love my daughter to do dancing or um, I'd love to take my family on a trip overseas or we're saving for something in particular. Um, anything that's said like that, they're like, ding, 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 ding. It's like an alarm goes off in my head and it's straight away, um, I know that I can help them with Sensi. So, of course, I'm going to have a recruiting conversation with them down the track. Um, and the other important thing is that you want to make sure that people like you and that they trust you. People are more likely to join our team, party with us and even shop with us um, when they know us and, that, and they trust us. So be warm and interested in them. Make sure you listen and you focus on them and that they feel important because that's going to help them to trust you. Okay, next slide. Your story, it's really important. Um, how am I going for time? Can I just check that? Oh, uh, you're right. Oh, we started late, okay. so it's late, yeah. Okay. So our story is really important. Um, it's something that we should share widely. Um, I want to tell you quickly about what what we call an elevator pitch, or what I've heard of it. I don't call it that. So I didn't make it up. Which basically, an elevator pitch is your story in no more than 30 seconds to a minute. Um, basically think of yourself when getting in a lift in a high rise where you're on the ground floor and you press the top floor. That's all you've got to tell them about Sensi. And a really good way to think about, because um, you don't want to bore people, this is when you're telling them your story. Um, basically if you have in mind why Sensi and why me, um, that's going to help you know what to put into your elevator pitch, that shorter story. Um, you, want to, you don't want to have a robot approach to this. Reason being is that you want to connect with the person 
and you want to be able to relate to them. So again, listen to key phrases or things that they say and then you make your elevator pitch, your why sensi and why me to target in on those things. Um, when you find out what really excites them or motivates them, you then tailor that your pitch to that, obviously. Um, the, um, your story that's on your personal website, you want to make sure that you're updating that regularly. It really doesn't matter what rank you are or how long you've been in the business, you should always make sure that you have a sen uh, your own sensi story there and, and update that as it changes and things happen because people will read that if they stumble on your website and if they don't connect with you, they won't join through you. You want them to be able to connect with you. Um, and make sure you have a photo. People don't want to join a warm-up. They want to see a face and they want to, um, that's going to help them relate to you as well. And I make sure that I include my story in all of my recruiting packages. The image you can see there is, um, is I might be an old example of my story, I'm not sure, but it's, um, it is, it's the base of what my story was and I do update that regularly as well. Okay, so next slide. Um, newsletters. I, um, I have a lot of success with newsletters, especially for getting orders, but I think it's important that, um, because obviously our customers are more likely to be our, um, our hosts and also more likely to be the ones that join. Um, if we keep regularly in touch and consistently in touch with our customers, and hosts, then we have a higher chance of them joining. And we make sure well, it's important that we always cover in our newsletter all three topics, just like we would at a party: joining, hosting, and shopping. And um, be careful not to just do a whole lot of facts. Um, if you look at, um, you know, open up the middle of the newspaper, and you've got an ad for cars in there, and it just says the, you know, the price and the, and you know, the features of them and things like that. It's really boring, and I, I really can't keep my attention on that too long, I'm not a big car lover. But the I bought a Jeep ads, that stands out to me as a really cool ad and you know, I bought a Jeep, everybody knows that slogan, that's very clever and they didn't base it on facts um, for people to buy Jeeps, it's all purely based on emotions. And another really good ad example that bases, um, targets emotions is I remember the Huggies ad, um, I remember when I was pregnant so obviously I was a little bit more um, emotional at those times. Uh, I remember them, this mum, you know, it must be love song on and she hugs her baby and snuggles in and it's just so beautiful. I remember like doing the whole, you know, tearing up thing and um, for me that was um, really important. Um, it helped me realise that when we target emotions um, that we're more likely to have success with our advertisements. Um, it's really important too with your newsletters to make sure that you add hyperlinks to any images that you have on there or specials or things like that to make it as simple as possible for people to click through and hit your website. Um, the, um, a good free newsletter place, one that I use, is called MailChimps. Um, I'd recommend that to anybody. Um, it's a really good way to start and um, it cut, it's gives you a lot of customers that you can email regularly each month. You're, when you look into it, you'll see what the, um, the free membership gives you. Um, so if you don't do newsletters, I encourage you to do it, but please target emotions, not facts and selling. Okay, um, next slide, social media. Now this can be really powerful or it can really go against us. So remember what I said at the start about we're walking, talking advertisements of our business. Um, it's eyes are always on you, so keep that in mind with anything that you post on your personal page and also on your business page. Um, warning though, don't spend all of your time here. There's so many other more effective ways to, to work your business, especially when it comes to recruiting. And you want to make sure that on your Facebook you're not a bulldozer. Um, our goals are to build positive relationships, remember, and to um, target emotions. We don't want to spam every person out there in the world. Um, so when we share emotions, we connect. So to do that, we need to share feelings, stories, successes, excitement, gratitude, and experiences. We really want to minimise that hard advertising, you know, things like join now, go to my website, um, things like that. Keep that at a minimum. Yes, there's a time and place for it, but focus more on emotions. Um, as I said before, have a business page. Um, join other groups. Nothing to do with Sensi, nothing to do with just you know, direct selling, find 
think outside the box, join groups and make sure that you don't go into them with, um, you know, Sensi first. Get to know them, discuss things, talk about other things and then ask questions on there as well. So get to know first before you start advertising or introducing Sensi. And the other thing, make sure you keep your personal page balanced. Don't Sensi vomit all over your page. Um, at least do, you know, two or three personal posts before you'll put a Sensi one in there again. Otherwise, you'll be known as that person that just talks about Sensi and people will probably hide you from their, their screens, from their walls anyway, so that you don't even know that you've, they've done that to you. Um, this is just a really quick example of um, an ad that I've used on my page to connect to do with recruiting. Be the mum you want to be and make the money you want to make. And that's my little girl, Lacey. Um, so it's just something really simple, but that's how you can connect. And then you'll see that I've got my website there as well. So if they want to learn more, they can, they can look. But that's not the main feature of it. Okay, next slide. It's really important that we follow up. Um, we, I, I have a top ten list. Um, of people, I have a whiteboard and I put them on my whiteboard. I also, in my phone, I have them there with the notes next to them so that if they call um, or um, if I'm calling them, I know what our last conversation was about. Um, so make sure you have your top 10 list if you do that, where you can see it and keep notes near them um, on that whiteboard or on your phone so that you can, when they call, you can go straight into that conversation with them again so that they feel that you've connected with them enough that you remember them and things like that. Um, and make sure you keep adding names as either people join or they let you know that they're not ready yet to join the list or that they don't want to be in it um, to do Sensi at all. Um, that's why I have a not yet list. If people aren't ready yet, I don't just write them off. I put them on the not yet list. So that's quite a long list. Um, I've heard of people having their fabulous 50 dream team list. And I actually think this is really cool. Um, the one that I've heard of, they have the name and then next to that, which is, I really encourage everybody to do this before they get their top 10 list. Um, I know there's a lot of lists, but I'm a list person. Um, because if you get a piece of paper and you do two columns, put the name in one, obviously a smaller column, and then the bigger column have reasons next to it, reasons why they would be so good at joining Sensi. If you sit down and you brainstorm 50 people, we all have 50 people, neighbours, friends, school, um, our children, school friends, parents, um, friends on Facebook, I'm sure we all have more than 50 on there. Um, write their name and reasons why you think they'd be great at joining Sensi, and then you pick up the phone and you call them and you let them know, I think you'd be amazing at Sensi for this reason. And um, I do this without the list, but um, since learning about the fabulous 50 Dream Team list, I've added that to my presentation tonight because it's something I'm definitely going to do in a more structured way. Um, but yeah, it's super important that we follow up that we call people personally, that we personal message them, text them, visit them, have a you know a coffee catch up with them, um, things like that. Be excited when we talk to them. A little trick that I like to do is with my hosts that do really well. If they do over a thousand in sales, I give them um, I let them know that if they achieve over a thousand in sales or three party bookings, that I'll give them a Sensi bar, um, three Sensi bars, one each month. If they do both, um, they'll get two lots of that, so they'll get six. So basically, this is a recruiting reward. Um, they don't know it, but I certainly do. It gives me the opportunity to meet them every single month, to give them the bar of their choice, and to get to know them more. I don't just talk about Sensi, I get to know them and find out you know, more about them and connect with them. And this is such a great way to help them to want to join Sensi, um, because they've got that constant contact with you. And the best thing is that they become really good friends. So I love that, um, the absolute most of it. Um, so next slide. This is something I do to make it really um, easy for people to join my team. Mary Christensen says, ensure your team's really easy to join and hard to leave. Um, I put these in my on the back of my story in all of my recruiting packs. I also email out this to people with my story, among other things, when people are interested in joining. Um, so that I can get it to them straight away. Um, basically, it's the steps to follow to join on my website. So if they um, if they want to join, there's no way they're going to accidentally click on somebody else's website, or that you know they get stuck and don't know what to do. And they they know that they need to have their tax file number and come up with a sensi name. Um, I know that they were things I appreciated knowing before I jumped on and have it time out over and over again while I'm trying to find things. Um, 
Next slide. Recruiting. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great at it. And the key recruiting conversation points on the last slide, um, sorry I'll let you catch up, is habits trump motivation. Believe in Sensi and believe in yourself. Don't let fears sabotage your recruiting efforts. Aim high with your goals and I'd like to add to that, make sure you achieve them no matter what, commit to achieving them. Ask everybody. Um, I did a training on this and I told my team to make sure they got their asking to gear. Um, ask, ask, ask. Talk to everybody about Sensi. Have conversations. Connect with them and make sure you follow up. And Mary Christensen's simple exit to any no's that you receive by people that just do not want to join is that to keep their integrity, you know, their um, your integrity intact and also to give them a genuine compliment is that you simply say, I bet you get asked all the time and um, it's really funny because it makes people stop because it is a compliment and they realise that it was a compliment that you asked them and they'll often say, actually, no, I don't. Thank you. And um, so that's a really simple exit to nose. And my last point is that if I can do it, you certainly can. So I encourage you all to set your goals tonight. So first, finish that list of everything that you've gotten out of Sensi, the blessings that have come to you and your family. Um, and know that by introducing Sensi to others that it can bless their lives as well and give them the opportunity to have that in their lives as well. Give them the opportunity to say no, but more importantly, give them the opportunity to say yes. And um, yeah, honestly, if I can recruit, all of you can as well. So thank you so much, Glennis and Mark, for allowing me to share some of my ideas with you and I hope it really helps you and your team to have lots of success, or lots more success. You guys are already amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Sheree. I mean, I mean, I'm sure everyone agrees with me about how wonderful you were. Um, I have learnt heaps. Just, I just want to add one little thing: um, is remember that um, when you are talking to people about joining or looking for people, don't always assume it's because about money. When I actually joined Sensi, it was because I was retired and I was bored, and I needed something to do. So, you know, money isn't always the reason why somebody will join. It was money Sensi. for me. Oh. <laughs> But it's not always the reason why people do join. So, you know, um, I was a retiree, so, so there. It's so true. I've got a girl in my team who's um, got a, they do really, really well, beautiful home, everything, and she said, I'm joining because I'm really shy. And um, she earns incredible money through Sensi. She's awesome and she's lost that fear of public speaking, but money was definitely not her motivation. Yeah, same here. Okay, everybody, now, now now's the time for questions. Um, oh, first of all, did you well, want to? Well, if you um, have any questions, I want to ask Sheree. Uh, Sheree, while she's on, on board. Sheree, can we please use your PowerPoint screens yes, to share with our teams? So that's from Nana Williams. Sheree, oh. do you want to know if she can use yeah, your you can do whatever you like with them, I don't mind. Yes. I hope it helps. Yeah, Nana's one of our directors, so that's cool. Um, anybody else? Anybody else got a question? Yes, from Jackie Caratiana. That was great, thank, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, anybody else? Uh, well, while people are thinking about questions, um, let's go and do another uh, giveaway. Now, Glenis, what are we giving away to people? We're going to give away a set of, um, what are they called? The moulds. The moulds to make uh, test, uh, to make yeah, samples. 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 Sample moulds. So, um, Jodie Craig, you have really to be won some. Jody Craig, you've won a set of sam um, moulds uh, for testing, testing moulds, whatever you call them. Um, and now we're going to do another one. And uh, from Banana Shiana Ham, thank you. I'd love to share. With our teams, your PowerPoint. PowerPoint. So yeah, that's cool. Another thank you there, Sheree, and I'm sure everybody's the same. Now, I, I'm going to do something very different because I'm going to make it harder for you guys because you – oh, hang on, there's lots of questions. We better get back to the questions first. Uh, Felicity says, thank you so much. I wrote so many notes in Sydney. in Sydney whilst listening to you, and I did tonight. Thank you so much. From Jodie Craig, thank you. From Shiana, well, she laughed at me again because I keep calling her banana. Uh, question, shout out to the amazing guest speaker, Sheree Rees from Mim and Neil. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mim and Neil. Great to have you. Okay, so because you guys keep getting these things way too easy, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit harder for you. I'm going to show you another product. This is a bar. And the name of the fragrance is 
there's two words, and I want you to use the alphabet. So A is, sorry, yeah, A is 1 and Z is 26. So the first two letters of the two words of this fragrance um, join it all together to make one number. It's a three digit number, and the first one to get it um, gets. It's a three digit number. Uh, the first one to get it will get uh, one of the molds as well. So if you're ready, I'm just going to cover it up. Are you sure they understand what you mean? So that's it there. So if you can work out what the, the name of that fragrance is, it's two words, and uh, use the alphabet to make numbers. So one is, so A is one, B is two, etc. And then make a number out of it. And then the first one to get it right will get it. Jackie, you're close, but not close enough. Uh, no, no. Why three so, numbers? I don't understand the three numbers. Because that one, right, and then that oh, one there. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've got 123, 213, 264, 10, 11, uh, 20, 125. Nobody's got it yet. Anyway. Uh, somebody's going to get the maths right. Can you can you read the number? <laughs> so we've got some more guesses: twenty, hundred twenty-five, twenty-two, hundred. See this? I've I told you I'd make it harder for you. <laughs> somebody put up. Somebody write in the name. What's the name of that fragrance? That'll help. Ooh. We've got 116, 124. I can't see the bar. Okay, so Jackie Caratown has got apple s'mores, and that's the correct fragrance. So the letters are A and S. Oh, Jackie, you won some moulds, girl. Well, hang on. No, well, well, we're waiting for the number first. Oh, I have to get the number. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, the, the name of the fragrance is apple s'mores. So now make the number out of that. So A is one, so it starts with one, and S, what number is that? There we go, Tracy Finch, 119, well done. Yeah, but uh, but we've got, we've got to do something for Jackie now because she gets you to guess the fragrance. Okay, we'll give Jackie one too then. Very good. Um, so, well done, ladies. I've managed to drag that out for longer than normal. So who, was the, who, who just got it then? Tracy Finch. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay, so... Tracy Finch, there you go. Excellent. Any more questions for Sheree before we let her go? Because she's she's got a family. She's got a family she has to worry about. So, any more questions quickly? No. All right. That's excellent. Um, can you read that? Good guys. Good night. Thank so you so thanks, much. Sheree. Thank appreciate you, much, Sheree. you coming on tonight for we, us. We really appreciate all that you've done to help us. That's wonderful. Oh, Thank you. Bye. Okay. Good night. Now, for everybody else, our next, just to let you know, the next webinar is obviously November, and it's the first Wednesday, so it's the 4th of November. So we'll get the links up prior to that, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. One thing I just want to mention about that, once I get the link up, you, you want to register right away because a lot of people just leave it until the last day. So I'll try and get it out maybe a couple of weeks before, but my biggest worry is if I get the put the link up too early that you're just going to be totally forget about it. So I don't like to do it much before, about a week before, because but as soon as I get it up there, just register so that you know it's not far away um, so that we, you know, we've got an idea of how many people are attending. Super duper. Well, thanks for your attendance tonight. Hopefully you got plenty of stuff out of that. Um, my last, my parting comment is, Get your ask into gear. I thought it was a fantastic line. And uh, don't be a bunch of turkeys. So when you leave and turn this webinar off and have a look at it or listen to it later, <laughs> make sure that you do something. Don't walk home. You're a turkey, so fly. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, what's this? What's Chelsea? We can add it to a Google Calendar. To remind us. Yeah, that's fabulous. Thank you. Right. Good Thanks, night, everybody. Good night. We'll Bye. see you next time. Bye.